Hello everybody and I hope you enjoyed this week's reading vlog. So I managed to almost finish A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Um, I am nearly done. Uh, I do know who did everything now. Um, so I tried to get to at least that point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been kind of sick this week with this cold. So um, reading was a bit difficult. I like this book a lot. Uh, the characters are pretty good and for a YA mystery this is pretty good. Yeah, it's about this girl Pip who um, is doing her, her final school project on a murder that happened in her hometown and she's trying to figure out if the person who everybody thinks is guilty is actually guilty or not. And uh, so yeah, a lot of twists and turns in this story and um, the TV show on Netflix just came out. Um, so. Yeah, I've been comparing the two. Uh, they did some minor tweaks to the story in the show, and I'm not entirely sure why they changed those because they were done much smoother and better in the book, um, in my opinion. <laughs> they just made me kind of giggle on um, the TV show because it was so dramatized. <laughs> um, so I was like, that would not happen at all. But. Uh, yeah, so far I like the show, but the book is much better in that regard. Yeah, I think the kids in the show are doing a pretty good job so far. Um, but yeah, there are only six episodes up at the moment. I'm sure they're going to release more episodes as they do. <laughs> I kind of hate that they do that, that they split up a TV show halfway through and then you want to know what happens later, but you have to wait for that other half. <sighs> I don't like it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I do know what happens, um, who did it, and who did everything in the book, um, and uh, yeah, it all makes sense now. Um, there are a lot of twists and turns with other characters that you think everybody's guilty at one point, and everybody has something to hide in that small town, so that I really like. Um, yeah, I still like the book better than the show. <laughs> but if you want to watch the show and not read the book, you don't have to read the book to know what happens. So they stick pretty closely to the book, which I like a lot. Um, I've been enjoying the fact that they stick closely to books now um, on TV shows and movies. So that's really nice. Um, I've been trying to compare other things to uh, books versus movies and shows uh, so if you want me to do one specifically that you uh, know there's a movie of let me know <laughs> uh, I like doing that a lot um, I've already done some but on my own without blogging it <laughs> uh, it's just something I like to do this book is pretty twisty I normally figure out the mystery like halfway through and I get frustrated and then I stop reading it um, so yeah, I like that this mystery is pretty twisty all the way through. Um, that's very rare for me to find, <laughs> so I like that a lot. So this book might be a four star for me, not a five star exactly, but the writing is very simple, which um, is easy to fly through, but it's not really like anything that special to me. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the writing is what could have been better in my opinion. I like the characters a lot and it seems pretty realistic in my opinion except for the fact that like she's a teenager trying to solve this murder. <laughs> so I couldn't get past that fact for a while. It's just like she's a teenager. She can't figure this out. <laughs> but um, maybe teenagers can. I don't know. But it, that part just seems kind of silly to me. But um, it is YA so. <laughs> <laughs> but just keep that in mind. Yeah, that is my review of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And uh, let me know what you think of the show and the book if you've read it. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.